while the psychology, physiology, environmental factors, and so forth that underlie weight loss are very complex. One is energy intake, and one is energy expenditure. Ultimately, the goal is to get into a calorie deficit. You can do that by reducing your energy intake, aka eating a little bit less, or you can do it by moving more and increasing your physical activity. And that begs the question, what form of physical activity or whacking out is best for fat loss? By the end of this video, you'll know the answer. Welcome back, Dr. Nile Wolf with you today, PhD in sports science, breaking down the best workouts for fat loss. First, some bad news. Physical activity, or exercising specifically, isn't the main thing when it comes to losing weight and getting into a calorie deficit. The saying, you can't out-train a bad diet, is probably true when it comes to weight loss. Exercise likely isn't that magic bullet that will all of a sudden make you lose tons and tons of fat. However, it can likely contribute. It is very difficult to create a calorie deficit purely through exercising. Usually, exercising is secondary to diet, and that's been shown in tons of research. To give you an example, here's a study by Foster Schubert and colleagues from 2012. In this study, they compared four groups. The first group was a control group. The second group performed nearly four hours a week of moderate intensity cardio. The third group was simply put on a relatively aggressive calorie deficit achieved through dietary changes. And the fourth group combined both the dietary changes with the four hours of exercising a week. A few findings emerged. First, the group that simply modified their diet lost a substantial amount of body weight. Second, the group that lost the most weight was actually the one combining exercising with dieting. And finally, the group just exercising didn't lose a ton of weight. They lost some weight, but not a ton. And that was in the context of doing nearly four hours of cardio a week. So if all you're doing is exercising, it's going to be difficult to lose a ton of weight. And that general idea of working out not being the main thing for weight loss is corroborated by more data out there. For example, a systematic review paper by Swift and colleagues from 2018 found that just working out, whether that was cardio or resistance training, didn't lead to tons of weight loss, usually in the range of zero to 5% of body weight at the most. However, when this is combined with dietary changes is when you can really start seeing some appreciable weight loss within the literature. Importantly though, they found more weight loss with cardio or endurance training as opposed to resistance or strength training. And so if, for example, in the gym, you've heard the claim that doing higher rep sets, say sets of 20 or more repetitions, is going to really help you lose fat, while that may be true in terms of directionality, i.e. it is going to help, the magnitude of that difference is going to be very, very, very small in all likelihood. In fact, you probably couldn't even tell the difference if you went from doing sets of 5 to 10 reps to only doing sets of 20 or more reps. The difference in weight loss is going to be minimal if there is one. So now that I've set your expectations at the right level for how much exercising can really contribute to weight loss, let me give you what I think is the best workout for fat loss. Before I do that though, let me tell you why exercising is a good idea anyways even if it doesn't contribute a ton to your weight loss. For example, we have several meta-analyses finding graded associations between how much you exercise and your health. For instance, a couple of meta-analyses have found that doing all the way up to 8 to maybe 15,000 steps improves your health more and more. Likewise, we have studies on moderate and vigorous intensity physical activity, which could be stuff like cardio, for example, finding that all the way to about 5 to 10 hours a week, you find improvements in your health. So even though the effect of exercising or working out on your fat loss is not going to be huge, I'm not going to sit here or stand here and lie to you, for your health, exercising is hugely important. Here's what makes a workout effective for fat loss. First, it needs to be sustainable. A big reason why working out doesn't really do much for your weight loss in the first place is because you don't burn that many calories in the grand scheme of things. A really hard, intense cardio session might have you burn 500 calories. To illustrate that even further, think about the hardest workout you could possibly do. Let's say you run a marathon completely unprepared. Assuming you weigh around 150 pounds, that would have you burn around 3,000 calories in one go. And that's great because 3,000 calories is nearly a pound of fat loss, assuming no physiological weirdness, which by the way, physiology is complicated. So oftentimes you will compensate when you exercise, leading to less weight loss than you thought. But assuming none of that happens, which it usually does, that would have you lose nearly a pound of fat, assuming a pound of fat is worth around 3,500 calories. And a marathon is super hard, right? And the issue there is that you probably wouldn't be able to do it more than about once a month, if that. And so you would lose an additional, not even a pound a month by incorporating this really intense form of cardio. 
Sustainability is huge because it needs to be able to be repeated multiple times a week to add up to a meaningful amount of energy expenditure to really trigger fat loss. For your body to lose fat, you need to send it the signal that you're using up energy and that it needs to draw it from somewhere, preferably from your fat stores. So if your workout isn't something you can do sustainably multiple times a week for weeks and months on end, it's not going to help you much in your fat loss journey. So think about that when you think about the equipment required, your motivation to do different things, it needs to be sustainable. Next, good cardio needs to fit within your lifestyle. If you're busy, for example, that is going to have ramifications for what form of cardio is best for your fat loss. And even if you're not busy, different people have different starting points. If you've just started working out for the first time and you're relatively overweight, you might find that walking is a much better form of activity for weight loss than something like sprinting or high intensity interval training. And finally, any good workout for fat loss needs to burn an appreciable amount of calories to actually matter for fat loss. You can consume a thousand calories just like that in about three minutes, but burning off a thousand calories can take you hours and hours. And so we need to make sure that whatever workout we use does burn an appreciable amount of energy to matter for fat loss. Now, at the risk of going full keno batty on you and making you take a quiz about your body type, I think most people fall into two kind of archetypes when it comes to working out for fat loss. So you'll fall into one of these categories. Let me break down each one so you can decide what sort of working out is going to be best to make you lose fat and keep it off. The first archetype is the person who's busy but is still looking to lose fat and make the most of their limited time that they have to work out. For you, here's what I recommend. I would set a baseline number of steps of say around four to 6,000 per day. Whatever you can fit into your lifestyle and the more the better. However, as far as health goes, even with just four to 6,000 steps, you'll get many of the health benefits that you get from activity. So even if you can only hit this consistently, it's still much better than not doing anything. Because you're busy, we'll need to make sure that whatever form of cardio we implement is pretty intense so as to burn more calories per minute spent working out. That means higher intensities of cardio. I would recommend aiming for a certain number of calories burned every time you work out for fat loss. While the calculations used to estimate energy expenditure or how many calories you burned during that workout won't be perfectly accurate, it's still a good, reliable metric to aim for. Any form of cardio will do provided you do it at a relatively high intensity. But as far as making it the least fatiguing as you can, here's a couple things to look for. First, forms of cardio with a minimal eccentric component will be better. I'll save you the science talk of what that means, but essentially things like cycling and rowing and incline walking will be a little bit less fatiguing per calorie burned than things like jogging or sprinting. Likewise, forms of cardio without any impact are going to be slightly easier to recover from as well. And therefore, these forms of cardio will have less of an impact on, for example, your strength training within the gym to preserve muscle. And so all else being equal, if you're just looking to burn calories and get the health benefits, I would prefer forms of cardio like cycling, incline walking, and rowing over things like running and sprinting. However, coming back to the sustainability factor, it needs to be something you somewhat enjoy as well. So if you, for example, find that you really enjoy team sports or something like that, joining a football or soccer team or a basketball team and making that a consistent habit within your life can really contribute to overall energy expenditure as well. And generally, socializing while being physically active is going to be very beneficial for your overall health. And the final recommendation, if you're busy but still want to lose fat, is to lift weights at least a couple times a week if you can do so. Training each muscle twice a week, say with two full body sessions, make sure that you keep your muscle around. Ultimately, when you're losing weight, for both the health benefits and for looking better, you'll want to keep your muscle around. Keep in mind that one pound of fat is worth around 3,500 calories. So to make an appreciable dent in your weight loss, you'll want to burn a decent amount of calories across the week. As a starting point, I would recommend four cardio sessions of 300 calories burned each time. That adds up to a weekly energy expenditure of 1200 calories through cardio, which if you keep it up, could result in an additional third of a pound of fat loss each week. If you add in the number of steps you're doing, that could be even more. Keep that up for six months and all else being equal, that could be an additional eight to nine pounds of fat lost. The second archetype people fall into are people who are less busy and or who are not hugely into working out or exercising. This also applies to people who are just new to working out in general and who may not be as fit or comfortable going into really intense cardio. The main thing for you is going to be getting more steps in. For instance, setting a baseline target of 10,000 steps per day is phenomenal for your health and for overall energy expenditure. Now you might be asking, how many calories does 10,000 steps burn? How do I estimate how many calories I'm burning when I'm doing steps? A good general heuristic is that you're burning one kilocalorie per kilogram of body weight per kilometer walked. Now, I'm sorry if you don't live in the metric world, but you'll have to use this anyways. For instance, for someone weighing 80 kilograms and being of a roughly average height, 
Here's what that would look like. Now, just walking leisurely is going to have a lower energy expenditure per minute spent walking than more intense forms of cardio. But it's also going to be a bit less fatiguing than more intense cardio. And importantly, going for walks is a great way to achieve several things at the same time. First, it's more sociable than most formal forms of cardio. If you're in the gym and just doing intense cardio, it's hard to socialize at the same time. When you're walking, you can easily bring along a friend or place a phone call to a family member, and all of a sudden, you're also making it productive and enjoyable. It's low intensity, and it's not very fatiguing on account of a low eccentric and impact component. Most people can walk. So walking is a pretty low barrier to entry form of physical activity. It can also allow you to get some exposure to sunlight, which helps with your circadian rhythm. It's also associated with better health benefits on account of being around nature. Indeed, there's something called nature therapy in the research that is generally deemed to be positive for health. And getting more steps in is associated with better health all the way to eight to maybe even 15,000 steps per day. Ideally, alongside this step count target, if you have the time to do it, lift weights twice a week, two full body sessions, or even more than that. Ultimately, while I gave you these two broad archetypes, realize that physical activity and working out for fat loss needs to be sustainable within your lifestyle to really make an impact. Find something that you enjoy, that you can fit within your lifestyle consistently, and that allows you to reach your goals. There's a spectrum from more busy and more intense forms of cardio to less busy and less intense, but the main thing is just going to be to be more physically active. To boost fat loss, get some cardio in or do more steps. And to retain your muscle mass, which is good for both aesthetics and overall health, get a couple of sessions of strength training in per week. That is the video, broke down how important working out for fat loss really is, what the best forms of working out for fat loss are, and why you should still be strength training even when you're working out for weight loss or fat loss. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, subscribe. Hopefully this is helping you get lean for summer or just make a positive overall lifestyle change for your weight and health. If you'd like me to coach you, consider checking out the link above and I could become your coach. If you're new to working out, I have good news for you. For years now, some sports scientists, colleagues, and my myself have been working on a training app that essentially takes what a good coach would do and puts it all into an app. It's filled with the most cutting edge science on how to gain muscle and it will create a program individualized to you helping you gain muscle. Even if you only have an hour to train a week or a couple of hours, the app will take all that into consideration and create a program that fits you. This app is coming out in the next couple of months. If you'd like to be notified when it does come out, check out myoadapt.com and sign up to the email newsletter. If you sign up for it when it launches, you'll be able to lock in at a lower price than any other time. Thank you for watching. Have a phenomenal day and I'll see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace.